Hi, I'm John Barber, Editor-in-Chief at IDW Publishing. And I'm Kim Dwinnell, um, author and illustrator of Surfside Girls. Surfside Girls came out last year from Top Shelf, uh, which is part of IDW. What Correct. can you What can you tell us about what the book's about? Well, I love adventure stories. I love adventure. I love mysteries. And so I wanted to write like a like strong girl power kind of book about girls in the ocean and ghosts and a mystery. Um, and then I kind of threw in some pirates because pirates are sexy. And and uh, so it's like very outdoors Southern California mystery solving. Cool. Best friends. Yeah, like I read it and I loved it, but what's the age group that you were thinking of when you were working on it? Like that that space from between like eight years old to maybe junior high. Okay. Um, I, I, love, I love junior high in general. I love that voice that comes out of 12 year olds um, because I mean, we all have these really loud memories of junior high, right? Middle school. I don't school. know if love is the word I'd use to describe it, but yeah, okay. <laughs> it, it's certainly like everything's a bit louder yes. than, it, than it is now, that's for sure. That makes a lot of sense. When you're in middle school. Yeah, no, you see the, the intensity of the characters' experiences and everything they see in there. Were there experiences in your life that led you to... I definitely, yeah, I definitely remember, like one of the things that's going on in Surfside Girls beyond the mystery is that one of the best friends has gotten into boys and just falls apart in a fits of giggles anytime she sees a boy. And then the other one is like, what is wrong with you? I, and I remember that. I remember having girlfriends and they would fall to that like boy crazy thing. And I was sort of last and I'd be thinking like, there's no one left. And then you fall too. And then you go, oh, I get it. But I, I do definitely remember those years. Were there ghosts? Um, maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe there were ghosts. <laughs> there were no pirates. Okay. No, there were no pirates. <laughs> So you were just telling me you've had a pretty relaxing set of set of months the last few months. <laughs> um, maybe not relaxing. Maybe that's sarcasm, I think. Um, yeah, seven days a week penciling this book um, since June, which was a little hard for me because I am a beach girl, and and that meant that I had to say no to the beach for quite a bit. And I gave myself Friday afternoons off. I would get to the beach on Friday afternoons. Oh, but cool. yeah, it's been intense. This this book too. This is book two of Surfside Girls. Yes, that's going to be coming out. It's called The Mystery at the Old Rancho. Oh wow! Digging into some California history. Okay. Um, Getting out of the ocean a little bit. Uh, must... Yeah, they they actually are. This all takes place while Sam, who's a junior lifeguard, is a volunteer, as are all her little junior lifeguard friends, at a surf competition in Surfside. And yet, a mystery unfolds in front of them because one of the ghosts of Danger Point, who uh, her her name is Maria, and she's highly dramatic, uh, she has been spooked. <laughs> she's been so a ghost is having a fit because she's been spooked by a human. And uh, not only has she been spooked, but she's crying to Robert, who is Sam's pirate sort of boyfriend. And there starts to be a little jealousy thing that goes on because uh, Sam needs to solve this mystery to get that woman to stop crying to her, her ghost <laughs> boyfriend. So that's, that's sort of where this starts. Um, that's the impetus for Sam to get very interested in solving the mystery. But they do dive quite a bit into um, the rancho culture of California history. Oh, that's, that's great. Uh, yeah, I was worried uh, some of the ghosts weren't, wouldn't be back. I was, I was afraid to ask you that question, uh, but I'm glad to hear they are. That's oh, great. yeah, and, and they're, um, we start to find out a little bit more of their stories as well. Um, yeah, the, the little Native American boys that run around with a rabbit, like why? Why does that happen? And we, we find out their backstory. And, um, and they also take a trip to the mission, the, the local mission, which is my Mission San Juan Capistrano, but I've named it Mission San Simon and they go down there looking for clues, and, and they may or may not find a ghost down there as well. That helps them out in the mission. <laughs> I guess we'll find out in uh, <laughs> Surfside Girls it. Volume 2. Yes, when I'm done uh, painting, you'll, uh, you'll find out. So it'll be, it'll be at summer, uh, summer 2019, right? Yes, correct. Fantastic. So uh, what can you tell me about the, the two main protagonists of the Surfside Girls series? Um, well, they're based loosely on me and my best friend, Melissa. and. Uh, uh, Sam, Sam is sort of more like me. And Sam is very outgoing and she's uh, very oceany. She's a, a junior lifeguard and she loves to swim and she loves to be out and being athletic. Um, and she's a tomboy and also a little slower on this interest in boys thing. Uh, where Jade, her best friend, is super intellectual. She, uh, she reads the paper and she likes to watch old movies and she's cultured that way. Her dad's a doctor, her mom's an architect. And they live in kind of like the classier area of the beach town. And they listen to classical music at home, that sort of household. Where Sam is in a, a rowdy, her dad owns the burger joint, the burger dude. You know, so it's, it's sort of a middle class household and it's, it's kind of dirty and loud and loving and, and uh, right down by the beach. Um, 
So kind of like the X-Files, Mulder and Scully, they have to work together. They need to take both these talents together in order to get the mystery solved because Sam's very, um, she, she's very quick to move and slow to think sometimes where Jade can go, wait, 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 let's think about this. Let's do some research. And that's that's sort of the balance between the two girls. That's cool. And I like that they have a, like a level of trust with each other that uh, I think like even though Jade couldn't possibly guess what had really happened, she still believed her friend. You know, that's it, it, what best friends do, yeah. right? That, and that's important to me in these books too, is that level of friendship, especially at that age, at that 12 year old age, when you're really reaching out and understanding what life's about, to have that core group of friends or that best friend that really helps you through that transition. So uh, uh, how did you get here? <laughs> what, what, did you, what was your, what's your train. background? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <the train. laughs> so what's your what's your your? Uh, I know a little bit about some of the stuff you, you did before uh, Suicide Girls, mm -hmm. but uh, can you tell tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I um I started out working in animation. I got hired out of school onto the Swan Princess, um, and then I worked on a really cool film called Cats Don't Dance. And if you haven't seen Cats Don't Dance, you have to. It has a cult following. It was made by Turner Feature Animation, and from there I went to Disney for Hercules, Mulan, and Tarzan. So those, those were some good, it was sort of the second golden age of animation, the traditional hand-drawn animation, and I teach that now. Um, and it was really good for me because what it taught me, especially Disney, was it taught me to sit in my chair and get drawings done. And I don't think I could get this work done because I see graphic novel as a film in a book. It's an animated film in a book. And I, I, I wouldn't have had the discipline to do it if I had not sat those 15 hour days in a studio, like making sure your scene gets done by the end of the week. Because at the end of the day in animation, the McDonald's toys are coming out and you better deliver that movie. <laughs> so you can't just say, oh wait, I'm not done. So there were some late nights and early mornings, but it, it, that's what it taught me. With uh, Surfside Girls, it's a um, uh, burger dude that's doing the, the toy and the toy time. Right? <laughs> that's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming down here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Surfside Girls Volume 1 is available now. Yes, and Book 2 will be out in August of 2019.